I bet you're pretty fucking sick of hearing people talk about AI. Cool, let's talk about AI. AI is interesting. It'll put us all out of work, but that's fine. I have other skills. To be honest, I'm pretty sick of seeing everyone's stream of conscious nightmares put to pixel by the minute on all of my feeds. Not to say that it's the artist equivalent to Instagram pictures of your lunch, but it is. It makes insane images faster than my chipmunk brain can figure out what's going on, so that's pretty cool. And it's not going anywhere, so I guess it's time to assimilate. Lately, I've been trying to figure out what to use it for, other than loose quasi-plagiarized concept art and a secondary Googler for mood board images. Tileable materials is the next Next best thing I could come up with. So this is that, and that's what this is. It's kind of impressive, honestly. Within a few minutes, I can get something pretty usable. So to start, generate a few variations of seamless images from your AI text to image generator of choice. I use Midjourney here because it's good. You use whatever you want. If you are using Midjourney, be sure to apply the dash dash tile flag to your prompts to make the images already seamless by default, most of the time. I'll post some of my prompts for these in the description below. If it's not already seamless, you can use Photoshop to make it seamless. I won't, but you could. Keep generating variations and regenerating and generating and again until it's good and good enough. Then drag and drop it into an image to material generator like Substance Sampler, Designer, or if you don't like to pay for things, materi Materialize. And bam! Instant PBR maps for you. If you're using Sampler, watch out for the AI powered image to matte algorithm. It added some unwanted seams to my originally seamless textures. Why Substance? It was already seamless. Just leave it alone. Use bitmap to material to avoid this. You can clean up the seams in Photoshop if you care enough. The base of the material is already done by this point. You can plug them into the material in your renderer of choice. I use Arnold and Maya because... Plug the color map into the base color. Play with the UV repeat scales until you're satisfied. Make it big. Make it small. Make it just right. Plug a float channel of the roughness into the specular roughness. Normals into normals. Height into the displacement. And you've got your base material ready to go. If I was feeling like a real artist, I'd jump into designer here and really tweak the maps until I get exactly what I wanted. But I don't want to make good materials. I just want to make okay materials within five minutes of work. So for this step, be lazy, and for the sake of this video, I'll do what I can directly in the shading network. So I'll use a remap or range node to roughly dial in the roughness, a color correction node to tweak the base colors, add a bit of saturation and contrast because screw realism, I'm just trying to actually enjoy this. By plugging the height into a range, I can try to mask certain parts of the map by extracting the highest and the lowest points on the map. I can then use these outputs as a mask in a layer node to isolate those areas and either mix other colors in, make them glossier, darken the depths, brighten the high points, whatever floats your boat, drop some noise, make it loud, mix it into the displacement with the height map, and that'll work. You could probably see now where you can use Designer or Photoshop to really mask out and blend or alter the maps to really get the perfect results that you're after. The seamless AI textures paired up with the instant image to material generators is a real powerful combo to get a base for any idea that's in your head and have a decent looking result within minutes. And from there you can really go wild. If you do care and want to use images with seams and make them tileable, this is how you do that. Open Photoshop, load the image, offset the image so that the seams are about in the middle, clone stamp them out, reverse the offset to go back to the default, and voila, no seams. Slap it on a cube, throw it on a wall, fill up the whole scene with these materials. It's super fun to play with and can create janky results in all the best kinds of ways. I don't see why anybody wouldn't want to use this in their day-to-day -day workflow. It's awesome. Really useful to get ideas started quickly and to develop interesting materials. So use it, have fun, and try to forget that you're contributing to the end of all humanity while doing it. 